Hey friends, it's Matt with Bowls, and today we are learning how to play Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team 2nd Edition. Let's go! Kill Team is a competitive, tactical, skirmish combat game between two players. The goal of both players is to score the most victory points. But what's great about Kill Team is the open groundwork the rules provide. While there are plenty of standard objectives to use, players can basically play for any objectives they agree upon. There are some minor tweaks between an open play game or a matched or narrative play game, but the core rules remain the same throughout. Kill Team is always played over the course of four rounds, which here are called turning points. Each turning point begins with determining initiative. Using a simple d6 die roll, players roll off and the higher roll wins the initiative, with ties going to whichever player did not have the initiative in the previous turning point. They collect the initiative token as a reminder. Next is the strategy phase, which is broken into three steps. First, players generate one command point. Command points are saved until they are spent on strategic ploys or tactical ploys. A strategic ploy is a unique rule that players can perform to aid their team. Strategic ploys can only be performed during the play strategic ploys step of the strategy phase. However, in comparison, tactical ploys, which are smaller bonuses, can be used whenever it would be appropriate to do so. For example, the command reroll tactical ploy will surely be a staple for all players. The final step of the strategy phase is target reveal. During this step, players may choose to reveal any tactical operations, or tac ops, these tack ops are hidden secondary objectives, which are selected by both players before the battle begins. This gives each player more control on how they will be able to score victory points throughout the game. With the strategy phase complete, we move on to the firefight phase, which is, to put it bluntly, the game. Starting with the player with the initiative token, that player chooses one of their operatives to activate. That operative will perform up to all of the actions it is allowed, then the other player will activate one of their operatives, do their actions, and so on, and continuing until all operatives in the kill zone have been activated, which ends the turning point. Each time an operative is activated, the controlling player must determine if the operative has the conceal order or the engage order. This order determines what sort of actions it will be able to take on its activation. The engage order allows for more action options, but the conceal order breaks line of sight if the operative is behind cover. When activated, an operative generates a number of action points equal to its action point limit, or APL, as written on its data card. All actions, with a few exceptions, require one or more action points be spent in order to perform that action. There are universal actions, which all operatives can perform. These are normal move, charge, fall back, dash, pass, overwatch, pick up, shoot, and fight. However, there are also unique actions, which will be listed on each operative's data card. Finally, mission actions will be available depending on the mission being played. Unless otherwise noted, an operative can only perform each action once per turning point. The last thing to note about activation is the idea of group activation. This represents how many operatives of the same type are activated in succession before passing control back to the other player. All movement in Kill Team is done in straight line increments. There are four different distances allowed. A black triangle is one inch, a white circle is two inches, blue square is three inches, and red pentagon is six inches. All of these distances are represented on the official Kill Team gauges or you can just use a measuring tape. When an operative takes any sort of movement, it must be done in straight line increments. So for example, the commando Daka boy can move three circle increments. So with each normal move action, it can move in a two inch straight line three times. Each straight line movement can be less than two inches, but it cannot curve or bend in any way. Which brings us to the shoot action. The shoot action allows an operative to make a ranged attack with one of the weapons on its data card. The operative chooses which of their ranged weapons and selects a target within line of sight, rolls as many attack dice as listed on the weapon's stats. Each die that meets or exceeds the attacker's ballistic skill is retained and the rest are discarded. A result of one is always a failed hit, and a result of six is a critical hit. 
The defender then rolls their defense dice and as many is listed on their defense characteristic. Again, ones are failed saves and six is a critical save. Then the defender can resolve their saves. They pair their successful save rolls to any of the oncoming attack rolls to discard the attack die. A normal save can discard a normal hit, a critical save can discard a critical hit or a normal hit, or two normal saves can be spent to discard one critical hit. Once the saved are resolved, the hits are resolved. Each weapon has two damage stats. The first number is the damage dealt by a normal hit. The second number is the damage dealt by a critical hit. Some weapons will also have special effects when dealing a critical hit, which will be listed under the exclamation point on the weapon's stat card. Some weapons will also have other special rules, as listed under the SR heading. Next up is the fight action, which represents your hand-to-hand -hand combat. Fighting is done mostly simultaneously between both engaged combatants. The active operative chooses which enemy to fight, and both combatants select their melee weapon and roll all of that weapon's attack die. They retain any rolls that meet or exceed their weapon skill, and from here is where fighting differs from shooting. Starting with the attacker, players alternate resolving one of their attack die. A die can be resolved as a strike or a parry. A strike inflicts damage, with normal hit dealing normal damage, and a critical hit dealing critical damage. A die can also be used to parry, which discards any enemy's attack die. There are a lot of other rules to know before you're ready to jump into a full game, things like terrain rules and effects, and determining line of sight, and special movement options, and the like. But hopefully this was enough to give you a good idea of everything you'll need to know to get started with Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. If you're interested in seeing everything you'll be able to find in the Kill Team Octarius box, click here. If you want a more detailed look at all the minis in the box, click here. Again, I'm Matt with Bowls. Thanks for watching.